Welcome everybody back for the fourth podcast of the Dogbone Podcast. Um, we it's been a couple weeks since we've recorded one of these, and um, we've just been traveling and had a lot of things going on. But we want to get back on track with it. Um, want to thank you for uh, tons of really good feedback so far on it. Um, have have heard a couple different thoughts on the the way we've formatted it so far we're kind of utilizing facebook instagram and, and different text messages and emails kind of following along with that as a question format picking out a few of them um and kind of going recapping them and going back through them so um steph is with me again as usual she's going to be helping kind of narrate it as far as the questions go um kind of acting as the person who would have sent the question in. Um, I have picked out a couple. Um, it, I think there was a couple messages that we got that people were asking, you know, where do we send questions? Um, like the format, want to know where. And I've had, I've probably had two or three on Instagram that sent me messages. And so I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know exactly <laughs> where, the, where the best way to send it is. Um, Facebook has been the easiest because I think, it's easier, I don't know, it seems to be easier to get longer messages. A lot of these questions are longer messages. Uh, the one that I picked out tonight um, it was, it, it had a video that came with it too. Um, I like that because it's really easy for me to see stuff and explain, uh, have a better understanding of it, and then maybe be able to ask questions more specifically. That kind of is the value um, when we do live things and um, that's the interaction part that has, brings value to it, I think. But so we, we picked one this week um, off of our Facebook page. Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one has a video too. I don't know if I might try to play that video, see if this mic will pick it up. Um, we've had a couple of people make comments about the uh, audio. So I'm really happy about that because <laughs> we bought a mic for this. And, and people have said that they really think it sounds clear and think, think it sounds... Um, good that way so I'm excited about that so we're gonna keep going I do want to say right away off the bat too um, we mentioned it I think in the text Steph put it down uh, we really want to thank the Turnpike Troubadours yes. for allowing us to use their music as the intro we listened to a bunch of music tried to build that was part of the holdup was uh, releasing this was picking what we felt was good intro music I know it doesn't really it matters to us and I think it's cool and so we struggled to find music that we liked and uh, a friend a really good friend of mine that um, is consequently really good friends with Turnpike Troubadours as well which we happen to be really big fans of I'm kind of a groupie of theirs. <laughs> we are and uh, so but yeah so they let it they said absolutely use the music so um, we really appreciate that and we'll continue to be using that going forward um, but, so I think we'll start this question, um, like I said, came with a video. Uh, yeah, it's and, a, and depending, I think, how they're listening to it, I'm hopefully going to be able to get this video on the website. So we do have all of the podcasts listed on the website as well. Yeah. So if you are listening on either the iTunes podcast or any of the other apps, um, check back on the website and hopefully we'll be able to get the video on there yeah, as well. Yeah, I, I think we're going to, I think we're going to try to play it um, because I think it is important and then, uh, but but it's a it's a question that I hear a lot of. Um, you may hear some some of the um, in the background here at our place. You might hear some examples of what I'm going to be talking about as well. So uh, it's a subject that if you read the title to this one, you will know we're talking about the whiners of the world. And I hate whiners. I hate whiny people. I hate whiny dogs. I don't think when it comes to people, I don't think we have a reason to whine. <laughs> Not in our world, anyway. Um, so, but I, when it comes to the dogs, um, I don't like whiners either. So I'm gonna let Steph kind of read this. Um, I'm gonna get we'll give you a little audio of what what we're dealing with, and then I'll talk about her specifically, and then uh, we'll talk about s some of the things on how we handle and deal with it ourselves with our dogs as well. So. Yeah, and this question is a bit of a long one, so bear with me, but I do think this person has a pretty good handle on the idea already. So this is from a person named Kelly, and she said, Hi, Jeremy. I have a possible podcast question for you about the never-ending whining. 
Two years ago, my husband and I adopted a lab and followed all of your foundation work with her from day one. Now she is six years old and can heal well on and off lead, stays on place, remote sits, and she shed hunts. She has come a long way in steadiness, but now has seemed to plateau. She still often whines before mealtime, even prior to prepping it, just because she knows it's almost time. We obviously don't feed her until she stops, and she has waited an hour plus on numerous occasions. She will do this when she's in her kennel in the garage, loose on the yard, and around the house. I take her for walks every day and have to wait 10 to 20 minutes to leave after putting her leash on before she will quit whining. She will lay down herself, knowing we will be there for a while, but she still continues to whine. I've tried correcting her every time she whines, but it doesn't seem to make a difference, except she will whine softer and quieter. My husband and I are both aware of our energy, and we are very calm and patient with her in these situations. When she does whine, we just freeze and we don't move around or talk. I've attached a video while waiting to go on our walk today. This is a huge improvement from when we got her and has taught our other dog a lot of patience as well, but I would love to see the whining end entirely. Please help. Okay, so let's move this mic. Let's push play on it. I'm going to see if we can catch this audio for those that are listening, uh, whether you're in your car or wherever you are, but we're going to turn this up and see if we can listen to it. So that's about it, it for the video. So now I'm gonna re, I'm gonna give you a visual of what I'm looking at right now. Two nice looking dogs. One older yellow lab, a uh, little gray in the muzzle. That's that's our our whiner in the video. Um, another dog next to her, really nice looking dog too. They're both sitting there real patiently. Um, now scroll back up, would you? So so we've got these questions. So when did she first send me a question? Back in. February, February 2017. 2017. So over a year ago. So so this this message came like this this was a exchange of Facebook, um, and there so this is when this started. So I'm looking through and she showed some pictures of her dogs. Um, when was this picture from? March 2017. March so 2017. So, so yeah. So so really nice looking dogs she has. Um, real patient looking dogs to be quite honest now when i bre start breaking down her now i'll start talking specifically about this so her dog is this this dog that's whining this yellow lab is six years old and they've had it for how long for for two years two years so they adopted it when it was four years old um sounds like it it has improved greatly um based on what she's saying and the video that she sent and i want to be the first person to say Man, if I had a dog that that was the extent of their whining and I felt like it was a big whiner, I would really recommend you go to a house with a whiny dog because that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad at all. Um, and I think, so first off, I think I like the idea that she's, I, I think she's doing everything right. I think they're doing everything right. Um, I will say this. So I think whining comes from a couple things. I think whining early on is an attention getter. I think dogs will whine, and if they get attention from it, they'll feed off of that. They'll want to whine more if they get attention. And sometimes that attention isn't always positive. Sometimes it's us yelling at them. But when they're little, they don't care. They're getting the attention that they're looking for, and that it will cause them to snowball in the wrong direction. They'll want to whine more. They'll want to whine more, harder, louder, until it gets us to give them more attention. So I do see that, and I, I, th I think ignoring is the key to that. Now, there's part of it, because I think it can be, become like an ingrained habit. The other part is, is I do believe that some dogs genetically whine. I think it's, I think it's a genetic trait that's passed on. Um, I have had dogs. I know people that have dogs. 
I know people that have dogs that have had dogs for generations, and whiners throw puppies that whine, who throw puppies that whine, who throw puppies that whine. So to a degree, I think the whining can be genetic. Now, the downside of this situation specifically is you didn't get the dog till it was four. Sounds like it whined really bad based on your description. Um, the problem is you got four years of habits there. And we don't know if that dog was whining from day one or if this was induced by someone um, giving attention to the whining. Uh, I, th I think sometimes we coddle our dogs a little bit. Um, like I mentioned before, you might hear some of this stuff in our house. I got a dog behind me here that just whined in his kennel. He gave a m more of a groan. And this little dog too, this yellow lab that we're talking about in this video, whined a little bit. It was high pitch. It was squeaky. It was squealy. It was almost like as the dog inhaled and exhaled, there was a whine. But there was also a little bit of a grunt in there. And we've got dogs. Taylor is one of our dogs that is real grunty. <laughs> you hear this? Even when she walks around. <laughs> and she just... Now, it's not awful. Like, I don't like it. But I'm not going to get too worked up about it either. But... This dog in the video was grunty and seemed to exhale and inhale, and you'd hear a little bit of a squeak from him, from her. I think it is her. But so I don't know what in this situation, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't know. I don't know if the dog, if the dog has continued to get better over the last two years, what I am going to say is now, I know at the very end she says, um, I would love to see the whining end entirely. Me too. Like, uh, we all do. But I, I think in this situation, I, I'm going to throw it back at you and go, I think you need to be realistic about it as well. You, you, you adapted or brought in a dog that was four years old that had really maybe intensified whining tendencies. And in two years now, you've sounds like you've done a really nice job of building in patience and building in the understanding that nothing is going to hurry happen quickly around here and it sounds like some of this whining you said has improved greatly and i would probably agree based on what i see not knowing what it sounded like before but i would so i would i would say this four years of habits have taken two years of habits, have, has taken two, two years of changing that habit to start moving what sounds like in the right direction. So unfortunately, there's no magic pill that you can do and take or give the dog and go, oh, that problem went away. You've got four years of habits entrenched into a dog, whether it's genetically induced or not. It's taken two years to start to go backwards and reverse that habit, I'm going to say, send me a message in two more years. If you're consistent for the next two years, I'd be curious to see are you where are you able to go from where you are right now, which I don't think is awful. So that's the first thing is I just want to make you understand and make you aware that, man, it's not that bad. Like I think a lot of people take themselves out of the situation and they look at it and they go, I get, it. you know, really, it's not that bad. Like, that's not that bad. And I think when you're in the situation, it becomes magnified and intensified. I experience it myself. I get short. I get testy at times. I get upset because certain dogs don't do certain things. And they seem like it's just never going to change. And I get real frustrated about it. And then I usually get to the point where I have to remind myself and go, um the dog's 10 months old or the dog is two years old or whatever the case is. And I go, gosh, where is my patience? I'm super impatient with it. And I stop worrying about why it's not happening. And lo and behold, it usually ha starts to happen. So in this situation, you got four years, you put two years into it and you've gotten what sounds like pretty good change in the right direction give me two more years now on the outside you're gonna go oh 
I wanted the answer like, what can I do different so that next week it changes? Nothing. So I'll, I'll burst the bubble. Two more years. But look back at the last two years that you've done this and tell me if it seems like an eternity because it probably went really quickly. So the next two years, in two years, you'll go, boy, those two years went really quickly. Right now, looking out down the road at two years, you're going, oh my God, two more years of this. Well, it's really not that bad. And think about it this way. What have you got to lose? Like, I, we go through the, I've had this conversation recently, uh, Project Mighty Pet that we're doing. If you're, not, if you're not aware of what that is, we post a lot of stuff on Facebook about it and some Instagram stuff. That's just its own little project that's evolving and, and turning into something I'm not sure what we'll do with yet, but I'm real glad we got it. And so one of the things that came up in Project Mighty Pet was we have a dog that's extremely whiny, like super annoying. A little Springer Spaniel that, man, it's tough to listen to. I mean, loud. And, and, and so for Kelly here, that's, that's, someone, that's one dog I should say. Go back and watch some of our um, Mighty Pet stuff and listen to the background with that dog. And then you'll give your yellow lab here that's gray in the face and a soft, s- simple little moan and groan and a little bit of a whine once in a while. You'll give her a big kiss because you'll go, <laughs> man, you're pretty good. Like, that's nothing. So sometimes it's we have to have it be relative. Like comparis, com- I don't like comparing to other dogs, but when you've got one that's really not that bad, I don't mind you comparing it to something that's having a bigger struggle because it'll make you feel good. So do that. But then the conversation that we've had with this dog about Mighty Pet is, you know, we don't know how old. I don't know exactly how old, two years, maybe not even two years old. Um, but the question is, you know, after a couple months of working with it, how come we can't get that dog to settle back down? That was something that came up in the conversation. And my answer was because it hasn't been that long. And one of the questions that came up was, well, how long do we put into this dog before we realize like maybe things just aren't going to change and are we wasting our time? And my answer was that dog's going to live to be 12 years old for sure. So if, It's two, let's just say it's two years old now. It's going to live till it's 12, let's say. You've got 10 years left. So if it takes you five more years to change the behavior, to get it where you want it to be, you're still going to get five years out of it that are really good, perfect the way you want it to be. So do you give up now and deal with the next 10 years of really bad? Or do you just keep moving? You just keep working on it. You just keep now it here's the hard part. It takes work. Like you'll have to work on it. So I don't think Kelly, what I really like about Kelly's email, that email that you read, Steph, I really like the idea that I don't sense any the only thing that gives me a little bit of a of a, a weird feeling about it is the please help exclamation point at the end. Like <laughs> she's desperate. <laughs> that's the only part that threw me off. Cause if you read the rest of it, I read that and I go, man, it's really well written. It's well punctuated. Like it's not one. I, we get a lot of them that are like this long and it's one sentence. Like it's, it's hard to read. It's hard to read them. <laughs> like I think a lot of it is because people thumb them out on their phone and it's hard to, but this, this, message from Kelly was really well written and it was the words that she chose to use show me like I don't think she's ready to quit in fact I think she and if you go back up and you look at like the messages that we've gotten for over a year now from her there have been a few different things I don't remember exactly what the other ones were but there have been a few different things one of them was I think it was a live with spry reference she was watching some live with spry or something but as you read through her messages and then you read through this big one at the end, I don't get a sense from her that she's so frustrated she's going to quit. I think she's maybe frustrated because she th- thinks and understands that she's doing everything right based on what she's heard us talk about. And I'll tell her, I think you are. I think you're right on. Uh, There's nothing I can fundamentally or mechanically tell you to do different. I think you're doing everything right. You're conscious of your body language and your energy levels around the dog. You're, you're being, you're taking the amount of time necessary. You're not giving up 
because you're not you're not letting the dog win these little mini battles. So like you're doing you're doing everything right. The one thing that I think you need more of or to do better with is patience. And like as hard as that is, that's the easiest answer to give you. You have to be more yeah, patient. And I wouldn't say so much patience with the dog in this situation because she said sometimes they wait an hour before feeding, yeah, I don't 20 minutes micro. before going for the walk, but just patience with herself I mean, in the long, I mean long term. Picture, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean, I don't mean yeah. patience on the micro of the dog. Like you're doing everything right with the dog. You wait an hour, that's a long time. To feed the dog, that's a long time. So... There's no question. I'm not questioning whatsoever your patience on the day-to-day activities. You're doing everything right. The, the thing that you need to do have more of is big picture patience. So if I tell you two more years, do this for two more years, I'm not promising you that it'll be fixed in two years. I'm just saying do this for two more years and have that in the back of your mind where you go, I'm not going to see this change for another two years. I doubt you'll be worried about it every day of when is the change coming because it's, it's a long ways away. Two years is a long ways. Maybe I should say five. Wait five years. So, I mean, I'm using it as an exaggeration and I'm using it to make a point of it just takes a while. I, I, I really believe that it takes a lot longer to train bad habits out than good habits in. And the thing about it is, and I don't think it's fair, it sucks, but good habits can get trained out really quickly. Really quickly. I wish it didn't work that way, but it does. The bad habits, the undesirable habits, to just train, change them, they don't change on a dime. Like, we can't just flip a switch on those. Those take longer to form than the bad habit itself took to form. So it's a, it's, it's a multiplier. If it took four years of habits, it might take four years of reversal. And if you do it, if you do it that's a one-to-one ratio. Four years of habits in the dog to get four, to, in four more years to get them out, that's a, one, a year for a year. That's probably optimistic. Because I, I really think it takes longer to get stuff out than it does to put them in. Now, that's if it's a formed habit. Now, so that, that's more specific to Kelly. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the genetics part of it. I think some dogs whine. I've seen it year after year after year with certain dogs. And when I say year after year after year, I mean like offspring after offspring after offspring. Some dogs whine. I think it can be passed. Now, how do you avoid that? Well, you, you can't train out genetics. That, that's hard. Now, one of the things I think you can do when, when it's early on, and I, I've had a little bit of success with this. I had a dog, one of my first dogs, um, it was an American lab, uh, Remy was her name. She got a little whiny on me once in a while. Uh, in the blind, she would get whiny when birds started to work. It was, a, it was, it was connected to her levels of excitement. And she, as she got more and more excited about things, <sighs> she'd get this Every time she breathed, she'd get this really intense shake. I mean, she shook physically, and she would just whine. You know, it just drove me nuts. And so that, I don't know if it was so much genetics or if it was a combination of genetics. And she didn't whine a lot more than that. It was more of a, that was more of a situational thing where the excitement levels would get real high. And so I tried to do a lot of different things. I have found ignoring is usually the best. It's also the hardest because... Depending on the person, this this goes back to it. It really doesn't matter. But it's not so much the dogs; it is the person. It goes back to the level of patience with the person. Like, how much can you stand? Like, that's part of it. How much can you stand? And it's all these little battles with these dogs, and we don't want to give in and let the dog win. So, when they whine to a point, there's one. There's a couple things I'll do. First off, ignore. So, we hear. I hear a lot about whining in crates. I just got a message from a guy that um, I, he sent me a message. The dog was like nine weeks old, I think, something like that. 
And boy, he was really struggling. I don't even think it was that old. I think he had the dog for about a week. And the dog was really struggling in the crate and whining. What should I do? You got to ignore it. If, uh, if somebody takes you away from your family and puts you in a new situation and puts you in a crate for the first time, you're going to make some noise too. But it's the idea is to get these dogs to feel comfortable, not scared. So when these little pups come in, so that's a different story. That's a completely different story if your puppy comes home and is whining. What I think you got to do there is you got to do everything you can to get the dog comfortable. I like covering the crates. I think putting them, I think crate training is really important. Um, I think you have to do it uh, it, from a housebreaking standpoint. And I think covering the crates takes a, helps you set up for success by eliminating a lot of distractions, both noise wise and visual. Like you don't put the crate in the middle of the living room and have everyone walk around it and expect the dog to be settled into it. So physically putting the crate in a spot where it kind of takes them away from all the action covering the crate with a blanket or or a towel or something that'll help keep it dark and quiet that helps i think you gotta be careful that they don't get it and pull it in because they'll pull it into the crate and chew on it so that you got to be careful of but um i think those are important ways and then when the dogs whine and cry and fuss here's what i'll do i'll let them out once Make sure they don't have to go to the bathroom. They go out, they do their business, they come back in, they just earned another pass. They get, I'm going to put them back in. I know they don't have to go to the bathroom because they just went. They whine, they cry, they fuss. I don't let them out. As soon as they settle, they're probably going to wear themselves out. A lot of times those little puppies will wear themselves out. Now, you might be listening and going, well, my dog has a lot of a lot of endurance because, I mean, sometimes it takes 45 minutes, an hour, but eventually they'll... They'll tire themselves out, fall asleep. Let them sleep a little bit. Then go get them, wake them up, bring them outside, let them go to the bathroom. Get in, that's how you're just getting this routine of, of housebreaking going. But the whining, they get to they whine, they go outside, and as soon as they don't go to the bathroom, I put them right back in the kennel, and then they, whine, then they cry it out. And they can't have you yelling at them, that's enough, be quiet, hush up, shut up. They don't, that's attention. They like that. So I can't have them, I can't give them that attention. You just got to, and sometimes if you don't have the patience, this goes back to the people. If you don't have the patience, move the dog. Put it in, put it down in a room at the end of the hallway. Something so that you you just leave it alone and let them, you, so that's early on. We just did a, we just did a new video, uh, puppy training uh, video, specifically on puppy training. That's a lot of what, that's, couple chapters that we talk about is the crate training stuff and then the the whining how to stop the whining fussing crying it's an over it's over an hour Uh, i just saw the i didn't see the final edit on it but it's over an hour and it's just like super super basic puppy stuff but that's one of them we talk about because i think it's one of the ones that people run into a huge problem with and if you don't address it properly early on you end up with maybe your dog isn't a genetic whiner but you create a whiner because of what you introduced to them the first week, two weeks, three weeks, three months, six months, year of that dog's life when it comes to the kennels and the crates and the whining and the attention that they get. So that's part of it. And then the other way I can do it is at a, with some dogs, I, ha, I get to a point of I correct. Now, I, I, I do this a couple times, and if it changes them, good. If it doesn't change them, then I got to think of something else. But there'll be a there's a point where I get a dog that'll be whining, might be on his bed. Um, I've got one right now that whines way more than I want to. Elsa, mm-hmm. El- Elsa will get on her bed and she'll whine, she'll whine a lot more than she should. We've I would say to the to this point now she's how old? Ten months? Nine months? Yeah, she's almost almost ten months. She's almost ten months I think. She, well I. Smith, Megan said that her dog was nine months. Mm -hmm. So it's about nine months old. So that dog whines more than I would like. She does it, I would say, mostly on her place, a little bit in the crate. In the morning, every morning. But but that, see, if they whine in the morning, I'm okay with it because she's basically waking up and saying, I got to go. I got to go to the bathroom. Now, she's a freaking clock. Like, she is an alarm clock. She's within minutes of 
getting up at the exact same time every single day. They're super habitual, and she is too. That I don't mind. Like, dog sleeps all night through the kennel, doesn't make a peep. Six o'clock, that dog's up, and she's whining. And I can't yell at her to be, her be quiet at that point because she's got to go to the bathroom. I can yell at her. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work. Are you here in the morning? <laughs> it doesn't work. She's not going to stop. She's got to go to the bathroom. So I got to get up, go down, get her, get her outside. She goes to the bathroom. She's not going to just, if I kennel her up any other time of the day, she very rarely cries in there or whines in there. But So that's different. But when she does get a little bit whiny, when she does get whiny on her bed, if it's persistent and to the point where like, I don't think she should be doing it, a firm correction. I'm not going to, not going to be naggy with her. Like if it's a lot like heel work, when I do heel work, if I put a collar on a slip collar, a slip chain or a slip collar onto a dog and I pull it, pull the dog around with about 50% pressure all the time, they become numb to it. Like it's either got to be a hundred percent on or a hundred percent off and a hundred percent on means enough to get a change in their behavior. Well, I think the same is true when it comes to correction to a dog verbally that's whiny, like it's going to be firm and it's going to be one time and it's going to have to make sure it gets a change because if the dog whines a little bit and I tell her to shut up and then the dog whines a little bit and I tell her shut up and then the dog whines a little bit and I tell her shut up. All she's doing is having a conversation with me. It has to be firm enough that she understands, stop it. That's an, and a lot of that will come with tone. Like, I don't think I did it today. I was up at Mighty Pet today working with them, and I, I don't think I did it today. But in the past, I have done it where I literally changed my tone because I just had enough of a dog's behavior. And I make it serious. And it means now. Like that tone sounds really different than anything I've said this whole podcast up until that point. But when I say now, it changes. And it changes their whole body language. It changes their whole everything. Our kids are the same way. There's certain tones that we can bring out. You have a tone with Sierra <laughs> that instantly gets results. I have the results. look with her, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you have to be able to gauge and find. So I think that's another option of... To a point, we are patient, 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 patient until I will try a correction. And I've had enough, I've had a, a lot of times where it's that's it. That's all I needed to do. And the dog went, "Oops, sorry," and that's it. They're done with it. I think you gotta. They have to understand you mean it if you're gonna go down that road. And I and and you can't go down it if it doesn't work. Then you gotta figure something else out. Go yeah. back to the ignoring. Um, you know, it's it, it can't. But so full circle. I was going to say, would you recommend then for Kelly's question, because she talks a lot about patience. I mean, they stand for an hour before they eat. They go 20 minutes before they go for the walk. When would you change that, I wouldn't, that habit that dog, from the that patience dog, I versus. That dog, I wouldn't. Listening and watching that video. Yeah. Fit, that dog doesn't need a physical correction. And if you doesn't watch his video, there's two dogs dog sitting there soft. so calm and laying down and ready to go for a walk. Just, and this is almost some of the dogs that we've had that whine really bad, what they look like after they've settled it's not, in. It's not, it's not bad, Kelly. So I know you want it perfect, and we all do, but I also think we have to realize realistic. We have to be realistic as well. I don't know what it looked like two years ago, but I... I I would hope or wish you do remember because maybe that's just the reminder to go, you know what? We have come a long way in two years. Like th- she's a lot better now. And maybe that make maybe that's that doesn't fix it. That doesn't make the dog uh, stop whining. But what it should do is help you to be have maybe that extra amount of patience to go, you know what? It's really not that bad. Hearing maybe me telling you it's really not that bad. Maybe that's enough to make you feel better about it. I mean, it's not that bad. And so I think sometimes we have to be accepting to a point too of, hey, might not be perfect. Might not be perfect. 
But I don't know if we're ever perfect. So I think you can continually and should consistently try to improve. But I don't sense it in your message. I get it in a lot of other people's messages. I've got other questions that came in that I've... One guy, 13-week-old dog, he's ready to quit. (laughs) So that is the other extreme and i don't i don't think you're there but uh so i hope that helps i hope i know whining and it, it's a it's a nasty thing it's something that nobody likes um but i think i think just like anything else when it comes to with our dogs if we're running into some type of a struggle take a step back first off assess it figure out try to figure out where the issues lie and then attack it one at a time attack one thing at a time like i think i think i don't sense it with kelly i have sensed it with other people i think sometimes when we run into these things that our dogs are doing we can become really overwhelmed really quickly and that really snowballs in the wrong direction so take a step back be realistic keep working towards it and may, maybe most importantly be patient that's it. So All right. I think uh, that's it. I, I want to thank you guys for listening. I know we're at, we're at about 35 minutes, which is what we're trying to hit. Um, I've had some people ask comments about that too, and I think we're going to try to stick to that. Um, but I appreciate you listening. I thank you for it. If you would be willing to uh, do us the favor and give us, if you would rate, what do you call it, rating it? Yeah. Rating the podcast. Uh, there's a way you can rate it and also if you wouldn't mind i there was a bunch of uh, comments i think there was yeah. like 35 comments from the first great ratings ones that released. great comments and feedback. i appreciate that and if you would be willing to do that um it, it just means a ton to us it's how we have done everything to this point with our business is through help from people like you listening and watching and giving us feedback and helping us grow the awareness by sharing it and referring it to someone who they think it might help. And if you would continue to do that, boy, we sure appreciate it. That's it. 